Hello, powerful one. Welcome to this edition of Inner Growth to Sensual Enemy. You have a life that is good enough. It's a precious gift. Love it. You have your powers. You have your potential. You have your goals in life. Focus your power. Converting your potential into possibilities and your possibilities into realities. But in all of these equations, take the devil out of the picture entirely. When we come back from the break, we will talk more about taking the devil out of the picture of your life. I am who says what Anthony Elimi Hey. You know me, I am in the game of helping you grow from inside out. That is the drill. <music> What is the picture of your life? The devil is an ugly shadow of negativity. This shadow is what we humans have created with our poor self-image to destroy the canvas and the picture frame of our being. A writer once said that the idea of the devil it is very flawed. And in the reasoning of Robert Crowley, the devil is so evil that it is impossible for God to have conceived such a being. If God is the creator of all things and God is good, God is almighty, God is all love, it is impossible for God to create a being that is totally evil. In my own little way, when I have been reasoning about the concept of the devil as some entity that hates us so badly, and the thought of us being happy revives him and spoils his day. I had wondered that how did the devil come into existence and the understanding that I grew up to get was that God created him. And the question is where did God create the devil from? Then I hadn't fully understood that everything in creation is an emanate from God. I said possibly that God discovered that in the universe of God, there was something evil that needed to be taken out. And then God created all. And in the process, discovered where evil resided in creation. And that evil manifested itself fully in an entity known as the devil. As it began to manifest itself and rear its crest against the Almighty. And because the Almighty is all forgiving, all loving, the Almighty gave the devil the opportunity to change. But change, the devil still has it. Then he built hell and destruction for the devil and all who will follow its ways. That was my understanding as at that time. I said the time will come when evil will be put together in one vault of destruction and be sealed off forever. But then, Further research and grace brought this knowledge to me that everything in creation is God. Every single thing in creation is God in various manifestations. In all, God is highly compressed in form. We live in the universe of God where we are emanates from God and we feed on the emanates from God. Every time we take a breath, we breathe in God. And when we take out breath, we bring out God. There is no way in the entire universe where God is absent. And then when we now extend that to the devil, the devil's agents and all, we ask ourselves, are these also God? The answer remains emphatically yes. What about the hatred they have for us? There are no such entities that have such hatred for creation, for humanity. All that creation is designed to be is gaming. Gaming, we play. We all are interacting with each other at various forms. And this is it. The so-called resistance in life are introduced when we attach ourselves to the things that we desire greatly. 
that's where resistance happens. Why is it so? When you put a desire on something to the point of that desire defining you, making you that which you already are, your intention for that desire is for that desired object, that object of desire to make you that which you already are. Then you introduce resistance to your life. The devil that we create is a product of our intention. Until we begin to remove God from the equation, there is no devil in our lives. The moment a human being remove God, that is the source, the Almighty, its own source, from the picture of their being, at that moment, the devil is born. A creation that is displeased by your progress, that is sworn to destroy you, does not exist. Because whenever a human being says yes, the entire creation says yes with that human being. Doesn't matter whatever that human being says yes about. Once the human being has said yes to anything, all creation stands behind that yes. This is why we are told, be careful what you desire. Be careful what you seek. Be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. But the truth is that you always get it. Now, how do we create the devil? We create the devil by designing a life that is devoid of love. And how do we create a life that is devoid of love? When we begin to erase ourselves from the canvas of life, then we have begun to remove love from the picture. Am I complicating this matter for us already? How do we erase ourselves from the canvas of life? It is when we begin to accept and adopt beliefs that we are nothing, that we are beneath our usual standards of being. That is when we create the devil. And how do we do this? When we tie our happiness to that which cannot give us happiness, to that which exists for us, then, my friend, we have made the devil the king of our lives. How, again, do we do this? Matter. Matter is that product of the mind. When we make matter the source of our joy, the source of our fulfillment, we have organized God out of our lives. A lot of organizations exist. A lot of societies and groups exist purely for matter acquisition. They tell you, if you want to be rich and successful, be a member of our cults. So we teach you how to make money, how to amass wealth. That is all. And whoever is not a member of our organization is excluded from these possibilities and we will not give them business, we will not give them positive attention because they don't belong with us. So they say, Within us, there are the real humans, the exclusive class. Outside there are the dregs, the dogs, the to be used elements of life. That is devilish. To say there is an entity somewhere seated in power, pomp, and glory that human beings bow their heads to at the devil, God didn't create such a being. We are the ones that created such beings. And if there is such a being, that being must be a human being. Our thoughts are alive. Our thought can create any shape that we can see mentally and assume that that thing is an independent entity out there in space. There are indeed forces out there that have power, that have intentions to take worship, to take adulations from humanity in order to derail them from the original path. And those entities are also playing a game. And those entities don't know any better. If they knew any better, they wouldn't do what they are doing because they themselves have been beguiled by the universal mind. A lot of humans are worshipping the universal mind, thinking that is the source because the universal mind is mighty, it is powerful, it is capable of a lot of things. I've said in one of my videos that mind is the king of the universe. The universal mind is the source of all minds that human beings have on them. And the mind is a device, a corridor between the higher self, the soul, and the material world. The mind is the creator, is the manifestor, is the conduit pipe 
for appearances that we call realities. I did a video earlier on let's face reality, where we think that the reality are the things that are happening around us. Now it is like somebody intends to be healthy and the person's body is racked by ailments, all kinds of diseases and the person is thinking reality. Somebody comes to the person and says, you know what? I believe that someday you will stand up and walk free of this ailment. Say, oh, brother, let's face reality. Look at me. How can I get there? The person will tell you, brother, sister, you are looking at that which is not real. The state of your body right now is not real. It is apparency. The reality is that look inwards. You are never touched by any form of sickness because you are divine. But human beings haven't experienced life at the negative old level. They find it difficult to believe that what they experience with their five senses are not reality. So, apparency, apparency, apparency is what human beings worship. It's what human beings give credence to. And this is how the devil is created in our lives. But to say that there is an entity that God Almighty himself created and that entity turned against God to become an enemy of God. Such stories are best told to people who are unwilling to make the full use of their minds and having been restricted bit by bit by negative destructive beliefs, their minds have become extremely restricted that it cannot expand effectively to grasp higher knowledge there is no devil as contained in the books of many religions so my advice to you my friend if you indeed want to make effective progress beyond the material acquisitions and material craze of this lower universe is to take the devil out of your picture there is no force that is unhappy when you are making progress. There is no force that is unhappy when you are jolly. In fact, all the forces in the universe, including those who want you to worship them, who want you to see them as God, they are all out to make you happy, to make you succeed in whatever it is you're doing here. The only thing that does not give them pleasure is when you deny them when you acquire the knowledge, when you take on the mentality that denies them the place of deity in your life, that is when you offend them. Even at that, they will do everything to bring you back to that level of worship of them. And when it does not happen and they see that you are stubbornly focused on becoming your true self, after a while, they will leave you. And even they themselves will offer you the help that you need to go because you have conquered them. But to say that they exist with thorough hatred of you, no. In fact, that thorough hatred that we know, it's only human beings that have the capacity to do that because they are blind. They are blind at the essential, vital level of their being. Therefore, they can easily hate. Ignorance is the source of hatred. Hardly any being out there has the level of ignorance that human beings can be subjected to. So, my friend, there is no devil. The devil, as you see, begins to exist when you begin to listen to that the creational logic that I just spoke about. It is not the truth. It is crass apparency and its function is to keep you from the track of self-evolution. The goal of your being when you came to this world was to evolve towards your true self. And the concept of the devil drastically reduces that possibility because you have already removed knowledge that will help you to progress. And with knowledge, you grow. That's why the Jewish prophet in the Bible lamented, he said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Now, someone once told me, you quote from the Bible when it suits you. Well, it's not about anything suiting me. It's about something being true to life. There is no book written by humans that can actually fully explain the reality of our being. That book can only be found on our inside, on your inside. 
the book of life is within you, not outside. It wasn't written by humans. It was written by the source, the idea of who you are. Focus your attention on the source. Understand that the universe you are living in is benevolent and is working, having been designed to serve your best purpose and stick to that and you will make maximum progress. Thank you.